I have a dream. Those words may be the most famous words ever spoken. Dr. Martin Luther King roused a nation with those words in Washington, D.C. in 1963. He dreamed of all God's children, black and white, Jew and Gentile, Protestant and Catholic. The speech was the highlight of 10 years of protests and boycotts and legal challenges. The protests were peaceful. They met fire hoses with the quiet energy of peaceful resistance. They met ferocious dogs and sheriff's deputies with extraordinary calm. They were organized. They were thoughtful. They were guided by the light of reason and love for each other and their country. Can you imagine what it must have been like to organize all those protests? Who decided where to rally? Who got the permits? Who prepared bail for all the arrests? Who called the media? Who wrote the speeches? What was it like behind the scenes of a lunch counter sit-in or a rally at the park? Who made sure grandma and grandpa would be there, standing tall for equality? I'll tell you, it was Ella Josephine Baker. Ella Baker was the champion behind the scenes of the fight for equality. The 1960s brought great change and great turmoil. They also presented the great turning point in American history, where people of color demanded and won equality with all Americans. The civil rights movement was massive. Boycotts and protests, sit-ins at restaurants, legal challenges in the courts, all led to the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education, ending segregation in schools. The Civil Rights Act, passed 10 years later, gave people of all races equal rights to work, live, and be free in their own country. The modern civil rights movement that broke the barriers of segregation featured many familiar faces. Thurgood Marshall, Rosa Parks, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But protest movements are often fought in the trenches organizing protests and sit-ins, lectures and conferences that inspire and create the blueprint of a movement. Throughout all of it, Ella Josephine Baker, steadfast and headstrong, pushed organizations like the NAACP and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference into action. It took someone with incredible vision, strength, and organizational skills to be able to put those things together. And Ella Baker, I think, was in, unique in the fact that she was able to do all of those things. Ella Baker was one of the founders of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which showed the American people just what kind of injustice was being dealt to American citizens of color. Most of her experience on the job was organizing communities for protests, so that was her background. Their peaceful resistance to harassment, arrest, and violence helped generate sympathy and move public opinion away from segregation and toward equality. The underlying message that Martin Luther King was pushing, and that was that of nonviolence, and he learned it from Mahatma Gandhi, and that you turn the other cheek, that you don't exhibit violence for violence. And so we were, we had that from the very beginning. If you're not going to be this way, then we don't want you as a part of this movement because you've got to be strong enough to deal with this. When you talk about this nonviolent posturing that we see being taken on by Dr. King and members of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, understand that it was a real strategy. It was a strategy to put the onus on that other person. They then become the aggressor if you are the one who is sitting there and simply trying to exercise your right uh, to eat a hamburger in a lunch counter. Though she never gained the kind of fame that so many civil rights leaders of the time did, those leaders listened to Ella Josephine Baker. An eloquent writer and forceful speaker, 
Ella challenged her African-American brothers and sisters to face violence with nonviolence. They put aside their fears to confront what were known as Jim Crow laws, a set of legal standards that kept African-Americans from having equal rights to vote, work, and live freely in society. I think it had to instill a sense of uh, a concern in any human being who had any uh, ounce of, of love in their heart that this is not right. This is definitely wrong. Something has got to be done. She was the guru of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And she had a philosophy which was very straightforward. She didn't believe in one person being the leader. And whenever they got in uh, to a campaign, they would always turn to Ella Baker for advice and counsel. And I think that was her great contribution to the struggle of the 60s. To her dying breath, Ella Baker fought for justice. She said late in her life, in order for us as poor and oppressed people to become a part of a society that is meaningful, the system under which we now exist has to be radically changed. <laughs>